to take your violin playing to the next step, you have to learn how to play in third position. And in today's video, I'm gonna teach you the basics of what third position is about on the violin. Hi, my name is Eric and I am your guide to helping you become a better violinist. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you some tactical tips on how to achieve good intonation, proper position, and some other little details regarding third position. Let's get started if you have your violin with you. So with the third position, how do we even get up to third position? Well, if you are familiar with shifting, we have to talk about shifting first. Shifting allows us to get into the upper positions. Now, what I like to always tell my students when we are approaching third position, this is it all comes down to how we are shaping the frame of the hand because my hand is not flat like this there's a specific reason why even though i can play my fingers in first position with a flat with a flat palm if i shift up to the violin i'm actually not shifting up to third position i'm shifting up to fourth position this is a common mistake that a lot of students make so if i'm playing a first finger and I'm using the shoulder of the violin as a reference, you notice that it goes easily up to fourth position. Even you can argue fifth position up to the F sharp. Now, there's a way to combat this. If I'm going to twist my wrist, I'm using this part of my hand to block the rest of my hand from shifting up. Now, notice the angle in which my fingers are laying down on the fingerboard. If I bring my wrist back, look how much space I have. If I'm learning how to get up to third position, I am really enticed to go up to here. And then it's already too late because the, the palm of the hand, the side palm is actually not touching the this part of the shoulder, but on the side, which is not ideal. So when you are practicing first to third position shift, I have another video on how to shift. I'll leave it down in the description below. But what we're trying to do is we are trying to use this part of the hand to block us from shifting up any further. That's number one. Now you can see from this angle that my hand is blocking the, the shoulder. The shoulder of the violin is actually blocking my hand from shifting any farther up. And naturally, the first finger will be in third position. So now that you are going to practice this at home, I'm gonna talk about how to actually get good intonation in third position. Please remember that the whole steps and the half steps, they actually decrease in size as you go farther up the fingerboard because the string length is getting shorter. So therefore the half steps and the whole steps get shorter. So if I'm playing a first finger on the A, which is, technically are D natural. That is where third position is on the violin. Also, first finger on the E is an A, G on the D, C on the G string. But we're going to spend a lot of time on the A string today because that is the most comfortable for us. So we're gonna use first finger. I want you to try to get that note in tune. Now, a lot of the times I suggest doing like experimentation with the fingertips and finger pads. That's like one of my uh, really popular videos on the channel on how to effect effectively put the correct fingertip placement on the, uh, on the string of the violin. This is gonna be really important that you know that information prior to this video. So I recommend that you watch that video as well. So the first finger, depending on the shape of your finger, I'm using not a fingertip this way where I'm where my nail is touching the string. I'm not going flat this way. A lot of students, they get uncomfortable and they feel like they are going to drop the violin since they don't have any security. So they bring the wrist forward and hold the violin up. Now here's where the problem lies. The problem lies is that if I'm going from here to there, notice how my knuckles are below the fingerboard and the neck of the violin and my finger is flat. So even though you're in the third position area, you're actually not gonna be as in tune as you might think. So if I'm playing, I'm playing a D, and just for reference, I'm gonna put my wrist forward underneath. You hear how we're almost creeping into a C sharp there. 
That's why the fingertip placement is really important, especially in third position. So depending on your finger type, um, I happen to have a little bit uh, skinnier fingers. Uh, some of you have, might have chubbier fingers and you, you're going to have to talk to your teacher in regards to what is the best situation and best uh, solution for you. So if I'm playing a first finger, let's say I'm using maybe partially fingertip, partially finger pad, not this or not that, but kind of in the middle. That's my comfort zone. It, by the way, it looks something like this here. And then I'm going to put the second finger, the third finger, and the fourth finger. So I'm playing D to E, then F sharp, and then F sharp to G. That's a half step. So this is where I'm going to advise you to maybe experiment with the fingertip on the fourth finger, especially if you're playing like a major scale or if you're playing uh, a piece of music that uh, um, has a major key, you're gonna in, you're going to have the third and fourth finger be a half step, very likely, not all cases, but very likely, that you're going to use a finger pad-ish on the third finger to get the F sharp, but then to really solidify that intonation on the G, I'm using more of a fingertip. And that's an exception where now that we're all the rules that we learned in first position, where we're going to start bending the rules a little bit. And for me, it just happens to work. It just so happens that my fourth finger is more in tune if I use a fingertip and really try to get that half step in uh, as closely as possible. So if I'm playing, especially if I'm playing a scale and I want that leading tone, the F sharp, to be a little higher and then and this is what it looks like close up my third and fourth finger are quite close together that's what we're trying to get at so this is going to be a, applicable to all strings so if i'm playing on the e string as well you can hear that uh the overtones then That's your clue to see if your violin is resonant and to see if your intonation is, is correct. And then fourth finger on the D string, not so much because it is a C natural. We don't have an open, uh, an open C string to help us. And we don't have an F string, of course, on the G string. But generally speaking, the intonation is going to be a lot more solid with that pinky tip. Another element of third position to consider is the string height between the string and the bridge. Some strings have medium tension and some strings have high tension. Depending on your playing style, it might be difficult for you to press down when you have high tension strings for the sole reason that the tension is really tight and you will have to press farther down to be able to reach the fingerboard. Me personally, I like to play on medium tension strings, so it helps me be a little bit more flexible and actually it allows me to put the fourth finger down on the fingerboard with ease in third position. So if I'm playing, and also if I'm playing other fingers, then the string, the distance between the string and the fingerboard, they kind of uh, get smaller so it is easier to play fourth finger but let's say you have a note that is only a fourth finger you, you know just take a look at how much i'm pressing down it may not look like a lot but you will feel some some strain in your hand if you're not used to using your fourth finger in first position you know a lot of these exercises right here you know i teach a lot of my students just like tapping the fourth finger and you might notice also that i've built over the years, some muscle on the side of my hand because of all my uh, tapping of the fourth finger, really practicing that part of violin playing and part of left hand technique. And this is also for you to secure the, the left hand in third position. So if I'm playing, I know I can be very confident in playing that fourth finger. So that's my advice to you regarding the fourth finger. Now, in terms of intonation, Slow and steady is key. So yeah, that's that's what I would recommend. And another element of third position that I want you to consider when you're learning third position is how high your knuckles are above the fingerboard. For me, I have pretty large hands, so I'm not gonna be above the fingerboard because then 
it's quite uncomfortable for me to play this way. And of course, you don't want to go full finger pad mode because then when you're down here, your fourth finger, you see how it's actually going upward. You want there to be some kind of uh, a leveling off point right here. The fourth finger is going to help us, uh, you know, stay secure if our hand and our knuckles are at the appropriate height. So remember, not this, because look how my wrist is already high up and not this because I'm actually reaching upward towards the fourth finger. We don't want that. We want there to be consistency with the left hand. The best example of this is Augustine Heidelich. He has like one of the best left hands a violinist can have. And he is really efficient with his left hand. He doesn't do anything fancy, which um, I recommend you watch any of his videos. And he actually has a bunch of great tutorials on Facebook and on YouTube. You know, shout out to him. And another another great resource um, in addition to this. So that's my advice for you to really try to keep things steady, consistent, because uh, consistent practice and repetition is going to give you consistent intonation all throughout your music. And if you're wanting to learn more about intonation, fingertip placement, and other ideas on the violin, I'm going to leave some videos right over here for you to take a look at.